I wanted to spend some time talking about the recently passed uh, spending package, budget, whatever you want to call it, in Washington, D.C. Uh, maybe it's the old parliamentarian in me, and for those of you that don't recall from past shows, about 20 years ago, I was a parliamentarian for the legislature in Illinois, and I've got a lot of respect for the parliamentary system, and I have a lot of respect for the legislative process, particularly when the process and the system is honored. Uh, in this case, I thought that the system was not honored, and if nothing else, the passage of this particular legislation really typifies why our system is dysfunctional. Now, for those of you that have heard about this package, it's being pitched as anything but dysfunctional, it's being pitched as a bipartisan solution. Uh, the, the congressmen like to talk about how many bipartisan votes there were, Democratic votes, Republican votes, and make it look as though these guys were working together hard and came up with some type of compromise package. I, I don't see it that way. Uh, what I see instead is a dysfunctional Congress who could not get their job done and pass budgets on time and were pressed to pass a spending package to avoid a government shutdown. Now, in years past, the Democrats would have been happy to let the Republicans be blamed for the shutdown, as they did a few times. But uh, at least up until um, the end of the year, the end of 2014, we had a Democratic Senate and a Republican Congress. So they were both pretty much worried, from my perspective, as to who would get the blame for a shutdown. So the fact that we have a, bar, a, a piece of legislation that received votes that were both Democratic and Republican, to me, is not necessarily representative of the type of bipartisan compromise and solution that we're looking for in our legislature. To me, it's just symptomatic of dysfunction that they couldn't get the job done on time, they were pressed to get something done at the very end, and then they scrambled or cobbled together a package at the very end that, although it received bipartisan votes, really, to me, was not anywhere near the type of, again, bipartisan type solution that we're looking for. So for this discussion, I want to take you back a bit to something we've talked about before, which is the difference between the appropriation process and the substantive legislation process. So let's take a quick look at the whiteboard. So again, we're talking about this $1.1 trillion spending package. And the first concept we want to talk about is the difference between appropriation bills and substantive bills. Appropriation bills are bills that pass, that deal with spending, deal with money, and substantive bills are generally the other types of legislation that are substantive issues, everyday issues that um, you might see. And, and I guess the bottom line is they are, they are not spending. So spending bills versus non-spending bills. Traditionally, uh, particularly at the state legislative level where I was parliamentarian, appropriation bills would be strictly about spending and then substantive bills would be whatever the topic is. You know, whether it's an environmental bill or a crime bill or whatever. It would just be purely substance about that topic and would not deal with spending. If anything else, if you had a bill that was substantive, let's say it's an environmental bill, and in that environmental bill, the government had to spend some money to implement the bill. They were going to do something with respect to the environment that caused them to spend money. Maybe they have to purchase equipment or enforce some regulations. That particular spending would not be included in the substantive bill because you would not have spending in a substantive bill. The spending would be dealt with in the appropriations process. In a previous show, we talked at length about the appropriation process. And normally, particularly in Congress, it's, it's a year-long process that starts with the introduction of the president's uh, budget message. And then there is standards set by Congress uh, spending limits. And then you usually debate this for the next year. Uh, in Congresses, up until the last few years, we would have separate appropriation bills. You know, we might have a transportation bill. We might have an education bill. Well, for many years now, these have all been lumped together. So you have a bit of a disconnect with the normal process, at least what I consider the normal process, at least for this lumping together. And this year, we have this a massive, massive Christmas tree of a bill, $1.1 trillion. But I think this particular year's bill is remarkable for the substantive elements that are included. Let's take a look at a few of those. So we have many controversial features in this bill that, again, are substantive. Uh, perhaps the most pronounced one that you heard about was the rollback of many of the Dodd-Frank features from legislation that was passed in 2010. Again, the Dodd-Frank bill passed in 2010. So for those of you that want to think back to 2010, we had come out of the Great Recession, and there was you know, heightened uh, concern about the banking system. And the Congress spent an inordinate amount of time. In fact, they were blamed for how long it took them to get this particular package put together. 
It, the package itself was some, somewhat controversial. I know a lot of people weren't pleased with the package. But here you had a, a fix, or at least an attempted fix, that was negotiated and legislated over a period of years and finally put together. Now, literally in the blink of an eye, you have substantive changes that were made in an appropriation bill at the last minute. And I would suggest to you, as I'm going to suggest with the other provisions of, the, of this bill, had someone filed an individual standalone amendment to the Dodd-Frank bill, it would not have passed. So one thing that's happening here is they're sticking pieces of substantive legislation into an appropriation bill, which they know that has to pass because they don't want to be blamed for shutting down the government, yet they're doing this without uh, the type of discussion, the type of uh, committee work, the type of negotiation, the type of compromise that you normally see. So to, this, to me, is a major element of dysfunction. Another section of here that I find uh, very controversial and has been controversial, and again, to me, points out the dysfunction in the system, is a section that increases major donor limits. These are major donor political contribution limits to the individual parties each year. Going into this legislation, an individual donor could tr contribute $92,000 per year to their party. $92,000 per year to their party. That limit has now been raised to $777,000, an 800% increase. $92,000 to $777,000, again, an 800% increase that is now stuck in this budget package. Now, I would suggest to you again, this would never have passed. First of all, it would never have passed because in the light of day, in the sunshine as they call it, there would have been tremendous out, outroar, outpouring of uh, people who were upset about the notion that the political system was once again finding new ways to take in money and in this way exorbitant new ways to take in money. It just never would have passed. I don't even think it would have made it out of committee. Uh, even if it had bipartisan support, I think the day-to-day -day citizen would have been so outraged by this concept that they would have uh, made their outrage known and it would not have passed. Now again, in our program, we don't take positions on issues, so maybe I'm being a little strong by suggesting that I don't like this issue, but again, it's just one more of those uh, parts of the system that uh, allow people, the 1% of the 1% that we've been calling them, to give exorbitant, exorbitant amounts of money to the political system and then arguably extract influence, undue influence, for those contributions. $777,000 per year, per person, per party. So that's over a million and a half dollars in a two-year cycle. From the news reports, this money is needed so the parties can put on their uh, conventions in 2016. This money is needed for I don't know, some kind of leasing of real estate. And this money is needed for, for lawsuit, for litigation purposes, for their defending themselves in litigation. So again, you have a piece of substantive legislation snuck in a budget bill at the last minute without any sunshine being placed on it. And that, to me, is the biggest abuse of all. That is the abuse of the system. We're not following the process, and we are really exemplifying why the system is so dysfunctional. We may have a result, but getting to this result, as far as I'm concerned, is very, very dysfunctional. A couple other elements in there. Um, there are some major environmental pieces, and there are some major uh, agricultural pieces. And the, perhaps, just for a bit of humor, the uh, Congress stuck in some language that made it clear that there cannot be legislation in the District of Columbia that would legalize marijuana. Why, why this particular piece of legislation needed to have legislation as we speak to prevent the legalization of marijuana in, in, in the District of Columbia? Again, I found this a little comical, if not totally comical, and the fact that this had to be stuck in a bill uh, at the last minute to prevent a government shutdown and why this could not have gone through the ordinary process is something that escapes me. So th this is my concern. My concern is with process. None of these, none of, I do not believe any of these issues would have passed on a standalone basis. Uh, they're being passed along as bipartisan compromise where they're anything but compromise. This was, a, a, you know, like a, instead of a compromise, it's more like a hit and run situation where, uh, where the citizens of our country are the ones that got hit and run over because the process really wasn't followed. It's a last minute, you know, uh, cover of night type of thing that was used to pass a very significant piece of legislation. So when you hear your congressman talking about maybe their great work, and who knows, maybe it was great work. We don't know all these substantive pieces. We don't know if there was, you know, great 
thought going into limitations on spending, if this was some major spending compromise that, uh, you know, again, was just uh, reflects the beauty of the situation and the beauty of compromise and the beauty of process. I just don't happen to see, that, see it that way. I see the last minute uh, snubbing of the process, uh, snubbing of the electric, electorate, and just one more uh, typification, if there's such a word, of the fact that our system is totally dysfunctional.